Let's just do another one of the same one. one. Yeah. And it's the last one too. Ooh, it's all coming up Millhouse. My addiction to scratchers. <laughs> we are at Crescent Ballroom here for the First Love album release show. I always liked like live instrumentation a lot more than the sampling. It just seemed more authentic and it seemed like more feasible to get the sound that we wanted out of it. It's like why would we go through and try to dig and find like these records just to get like one little horn piece when like I know Danny Torgerson. Andrew and I both were like straight warp tour 15 year old kids and Authority Zero was like the Arizona local punk band. You know, I'm not sure if you could really pluck that out of Mouse's album, but uh, it's, it's definitely a part of me, and I think Mouse always brings a set of songs and a set of musical styles that we do have a common ground with punk rock music and skate punk. When we talk about Authority Zero, uh, getting Jason DeVore on the record was really, really cool. So, like, we had made that song, and we're like, I think this is in the same key as One More Minute. It'd be cool to sample that. And we started talking it over, like, well, we don't have any samples on the whole record. Maybe he would just come sing it so we don't have to worry about getting sued. <laughs> and he came through and did it. It was super cool. Like, me and, me and Ref were both sitting there just like straight, like 15 year old kids. It's like, oh my God, he's doing it. Like, the whole record's kind of got like a little bit more of like a bluesy undertone to it. Sarah Robinson is like the most crazy talented vocalist I've ever seen in person. When she did the, like, the big build up part, the very final song that we tracked. She straight made Andrew ref. She made him shed a tear. He let a thug tear go. The passage is like 30, 45 seconds. I played a clip of it for her, probably seven seconds of the clip. She goes, okay, I got it. And just took the head off of this fucker. See, it was really powerful. But he just cried, he looked at it, he goes, this is the most beautiful waveform I've ever created. <laughs> it just turned, <laughs> he's crying. I bought a scratcher one time on my very first tour, and uh, I was down to my last five dollars. <laughs> so I was playing poorly, and I won three hundred dollars on the spot. <laughs> and ever since then, I've just been addicted. So. so, the writing process for a lot of it was just me sitting down with an acoustic guitar, trying to relearn how to play, because that's how I started doing music in the first place. We had this reference thing going back and forth, like a reference Spotify playlist where I would add stuff to it and he would add stuff to it and my stuff would be like, oh, I really like the bass line on this. And then he'd be like, oh, if you like the bass line on that Jay-Z song, why don't you check out this John Mayer song? If I had uh, musical parents, I would have two dads. Tom York, probably, uh, I want to say he's like the more masculine one, and then John Mayer is going to be the more female finesse. Though they really fostered my musical upbringing, so anytime I'm, I'm approaching a project, I have them in my soul, in my heart. Holy shit, that. This is really where I win all the show money. I'm really excited. Crescent's like my favorite venue in the state. It's just a, it's a larger venue than I've ever attempted to sell out before. So I guess. It's big for me. It's really big for me. I ripped my pants skateboarding. <laughs> my name is Mouse Pal. My new record is called First Love. I don't know. Should I do something after?